So the question we're asking ourselves today is should you consider buying the Fujifilm X-T3 in 2023? Well, I'm gonna give you the short answer, yes. But let's talk about it and let's talk about why, because I think this is a great camera for a lot of different people. And let's talk about whether or not that includes you. So first up, this camera came out in 2018, right? So a little while ago, it's about five years ago, not actually a crazy amount of time ago, and it still feels pretty relevant. And certainly the specs and the way it feels when you actually use it, it still feels like a good camera. But does it hold up? Now, of course, since then, we've had the X-T4, we've had the X-T5, both of which kind of improved on this, added in new spec, the X-T5 in particular. Yeah, you know, it's a huge upgrade in terms of the resolution, in terms of the actual spec, in terms of video and all that kind of stuff. There's, there's a lot going on there, but depending on the kind of stuff you shoot, this still feels like a very modern camera. I remember reviewing this back in 2018 and actually going out and testing it again now. There's a lot to really love about this. Now, of course, this is a hybrid system. You can get the most out of this if you shoot photo and video, but there's a lot to love on both sides of it. You've got a 26 megapixel sensor in this camera. So quite a lot of detail there, quite a lot of resolution, certainly enough to actually crop if you want to. You've got enough room there to crop without worrying about losing loads of detail. And things like the low light performance are surprisingly good. It holds up really well. Of course, you've got those beautiful Fujifilm colors within the camera as well, which you would expect from a camera like this. And I feel like for me personally, the X-T2 maybe feels like a little bit of an extra step back. The X-T3 was a pretty decent sort of step up from the X-T2. But the X-T3, especially when I'm shooting photography with it, it really feels pretty modern and current actually. And I like the way that shoots. Now, of course, you've got things like film simulations in here as well. Not as many as you have on things like the X-T4 and then the X-T5, but you've got some nice stuff in here that you can shoot with to get some great shots out of camera. And then of course you can take them on the computer and edit them as well. Now, autofocus is an area which always kind of just makes me think when I think about older cameras, because it's something that just moves so fast in the photographic industry. You know, now a lot of cameras are able to do really incredible things with autofocus. This has 425 autofocus points. This has 100% coverage, which at the time was something really special. And honestly, it feels really good. It's very responsive, it's very quick. You know, it, it's just very reliable. I didn't really have any problems with it. And I think unless you're shooting very specific stuff, you're probably gonna find the autofocus in this absolutely fine. In fact, depending on what you're coming from, you might find this really, really nice to shoot with in terms of the autofocus. It was a big step up from the X-T2 and it, it works extremely well. No, it's not gonna be as good as the X-T5 or specifically modern cameras that came out, you know, within the last sort of six to 12 months, but it still is very good and more than enough for most people. You've got things like face and eye detect, which are things that you would take for granted now in new cameras, but it's in here. It's in here and it works, and that's all you really want. Now, I mentioned this is a hybrid system as well, so not just photography. And on the video side of things, this can shoot 4K up to 60 frames a second, full HD up to 120 frames a second, so you're kind of really covered there in terms of those higher frame rate, getting that nice slow motion, 4K, great resolution, and it looks good. It's good video. If you're a video content creator or even someone who goes out making you know video promos for small businesses or anything like that, this is going to be absolutely fine. The screen itself does not flip out like on the X-T4. It just flips down like that. So you can't kind of see yourself in the screen while you're filming. That really comes down to personal preference. I like the flip out screen of the X-T4. This isn't a deal breaker. The a7 III doesn't have a flip out screen. I use that every single day. So this is absolutely not a problem. Other than the screen, which is a touch screen as well. So it feels quite modern in that way. We've got the EVF, which looks really good. Now, when I first reviewed this, I said this was the best EVF I've ever used. That's no longer the case. And that's fair enough. It'd be crazy if it was still the best EVF, but it is really good. And I think that it holds up now really well. So it doesn't look like a really old, unpleasant EVF to use. It looks good. And then on the back, we've got the D-pad here, which you can use in the menus and the joystick, which I love having the option of both. I personally prefer the joystick, but some people like the D-pad, so no problem at all. Now, in terms of card slots and things like that, we have two card slots here, which is great to see. That means you can use this without fear. You know, you can back up onto a second card. It's nice to have that, right? USB-C as well as a connection, which is 
pretty impressive considering this came out in 2018. I'd expect to see it now, but it's great to see it here. All of this stuff just adds up to make this feel much more like a modern camera than you might otherwise expect. And of course, because it's an X-Series camera, we talked a bit about the look before, it doesn't look dated because they're styled. They have a style to them. And it looks, I think, I just think they look so good. And especially in silver. I remember the X-T3 in silver when it came out just wowed me and it absolutely feels the same here. You've got the dials for the shutter speed, for ISO, all that kind of stuff. Now you don't have the movie switch, which you see on the X-T4 for stills and movie, but it's fine. It's not a problem. As a hybrid camera, this is still a really good option. And you know what? Like I said in the video talking about whether you should consider the X-T4, a huge amount of your end result will come down to the lens that you use. And spending a little bit less, still getting a good camera, but allowing you to spend a little bit more on the lens, get some really nice glass on the front of this, you're gonna come away with some beautiful stuff. Now, whether it's photo, whether it's video, or like I say, if you shoot both, you're gonna get the most out of something like this. There's a lot to love about this camera. It's just a wonderful camera. So absolutely go and check this out on our website. We've got these in our used department, so you can get them at a really nice price. You can check out the link down in the description to go and check them out. Of course, I'll put a link down there so you can check out our entire used department as well, because there's loads of stuff, cameras, lenses, whatever you shoot, there's gonna be something really cool to check out. And of course, we're adding stuff all the time as well. So every day there's new stuff there. So definitely go and check that all out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video because there's new stuff all the time, every single week. Tutorials, reviews, looking at older cameras, all kinds of fun stuff. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.